السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد My brothers and sisters the roots of a tree that have been mentioned in a hadith of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and biting onto them, biting onto the roots of a tree, up until we die, is more beloved to us than inhiraf, misguidance and deviation. There's a hadith that we'll mention today, an Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiyallahu anhu qala, kan al-nas, يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني that Hudayfa he said رضي الله عنه that the people used to ask the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم about the good as for me then I used to ask him about the evil out of fear that it may reach me فقلت يا رسول الله سو اسد او مسنجر اوف الله انا كنا في جاهليه وشر وي ور ليفينغ ان تايمز اوف جاهليه اند ايفل وجاء الله بهذا الخير ذن الله سبحانه وتعالى هي بروت ذس خير ذس جودنس سو از ذير اني ايفل افتر ذس از ذير اني جود after, rather, is there any evil after this good? قال نعم. He said yes. Then we asked him. Oh, mess- oh he asked him, Hudayfa, he said, I said to the Messenger of Allah, and is there any good after that evil? قال نعم. وفيه دخن. He said yes. There is good after that evil, except that, they, that it is tainted. قلت وما دخنه. So, we, so I said to the Messenger of Allah, and what is its taint? He said, قَوْمٌ يَسْتَنُّونَ بِغَيْرِ سُنَّتِي A people, they will follow other than my sunnah. وَيَهْدُونَ بِغَيْرِ هَدِي And they will be guided by other than my guidance. تَعْرِفُ مِنْهُمْ وَتُنْكِرُ You will recognize some of it, and you will see others as opposing. فقلت, so he said that I asked the Messenger of Allah, هل بعد هذا الخير من شر? And is there after this good, meaning this tainted good, is there any evil after that good? قال نعم دعاة على أبواب جهنم من أجابهم إليها قذفوه فيها he said, yes, there is evil. They are callers upon the gates of the hellfire. And whomsoever answers their call, then they will cast them into it. Qult. So Hudayfa said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, sifhum lana, describe these people to me, these callers upon the gates of the hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu said, hum mil jildatina, they are from our people. وَيَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِنَا And they will speak with our language. قُلْتْ So I said, فَمَا تَأْمُرُنِي إِنْ أَدْرِكَنِي ذَلِكْ إِنْ أَدْرَكَنِي ذَلِكْ So what do you command me with? If I reach that time of evil, or if that reaches me, قَالَ تَلْزَمُ جَمَاعَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِمَامَهُمْ he said, cling to the main body of the Muslims and their ruler. قلت, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ جَمَاعَةٌ, جماعة وَلَا إِمَامٌ he, So he said to the Messenger of Allah, and what if there is no main body of Muslims and neither an imam over them, a ruler over them? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَاعْتَزِلْ 
تلك الفرقة كلها then leave off all of those sects ولو أن تعد بأسل شجرة حتى يدركك الموت وأنت على ذلك even if you have to bite on to the roots of a tree up until death reaches you and you are still in that state in what state? in a state of sunnah reported by Al-Bukhari Muslim and others and the hadith of course is agreed upon so its authenticity is not under question so here Hudayfa radiallahu anhu informed meaning informed us in this hadith that the people used to ask the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam about the khair about the good things but he used to ask him about the evil out of fear that that evil may reach him and he may fall into it and from this we get that famous statement of the poet in those lines of poetry Abu Firas al-Hamadani he is saying عرفتو شر لا للشر he said that I learned evil not for the sake of evil itself لكن لتوقيه but I only learned it to protect myself from it فمن لم يعرف الخير من الشر يقع فيه for the one who does not know good from evil will fall into it, meaning he will fall into evil. So Hudayfa said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that is of course from a foundational principle of the religion, that we don't learn evil for evil itself, but we know good from evil so that we do not fall into the evil. So Hudayfa, he said, O oh Messenger of Allah, we were in Jahiliya and, e- and, and Shar, we were in times of pre-Islamic ignorance, meaning we were living in a time before revelation we were living in a time before revelation meaning in a time of evil in a time of shirk in a time of idolatry in a time of misguidance in a time when the people used to be used to bury their daughters alive and all types of depravity and debauchery used to take place that a woman would sleep with numerous men and the people used to make tawaf of, around the house naked. And they used to defile those, 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 those sacred affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has mentioned their sacredness. So everything that Islam used to disapprove of, that, what, that is what they used to live in. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this khair. So after they were living, in a time of evil in belief, evil of manners, evil in terms of their behavior. Then Allah brought that goodness to them. And that goodness is Islam with its purity, with its pristine nature and with its clarity. So is there any evil after this good that we have come to, that Allah has brought us? This is what Hudayfa is asking. That now we, have have, we, we are living in this khair, in this the beauty of Islam and the beauty of ibadah, the beauty of tawheed, that we have been cultivated upon goodness. So will there be any evil after that goodness? So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And the Prophet ﷺ did not explain further. When he said there will be evil, he did not explain further. And nor did Hudayfa ask him anything further. Then then Hudayfa said, then is there any good after that evil? He said, yes. Then the Messenger of Allah, him from himself, he explained it further by saying, وَفِيهِ دَخْنٌ There is within it a taint. And that taint, my brothers and sisters, is a cloudiness, a darkness, through which a person cannot see. And it also refers to hatred and ill manners, and bad behavior. That the intellects will change, as will the religion, and as will the hearts. And this is because, 
that good that comes after, because there was goodness, meaning there was, sorry, there was jahiliyyah, there was evil. Then there was the purity of Islam, beyond which that was the most pure society that ever lived upon the earth. Prophet Sallallahu and his companions. So that was the best that could have ever occurred, because it was the best of generations and the best of mankind. Then there is evil. Then a goodness will return. But the goodness that returns could never be as good as it once was. And that is a reality. Any good that comes after the Prophet ﷺ, then it will never be as good as it was in the time of the Prophet and his companions. عنهم. So it will never return to that good, so it has a taint. So that goodness that comes back will not be pure. Rather, it will be tainted. And it will be something cloudy and smoky. And the reason for this is because of innovations. Because Hudayfa asked the Messenger of Allah, he said to him, وَمَا دَخْنُهُ So what is that taint? What is the taint in that goodness? So then the Prophet ﷺ informed him that there will come a people and they will follow other than my sunnah. And they will be guided by other than my guidance, meaning innovation. Other than the sunnah, bid'ah. Other than guidance, misguidance. So bid'ah and dalala, it will come. And then, the, then he said, the Prophet Sallallahu that you will recognize some of it as something that is good. And you will you will repudiate and reject other parts of it. Meaning that you, Hudayfa, and other than you, those who have basira, those who have insight, those who have knowledge, that you will recognize from their deeds of, deeds of the people that which agrees with the sharia. And you will also recognize that which does not agree to it and that which does not agree with it. Rather, it opposes it. So then Hudayfa asked, is there going to be any evil after that good that is tainted? قَالَ نَعَمْ دُعَاتْ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ جَهَنَّمْ they will be callers upon the gates of the hellfire. Whomsoever answers their call, they will throw them into the hellfire. So here the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa resembled the condition of those callers as if they are standing at the gates of the hellfire inviting the people to it. So he made a resemblance that when they call to their deviation, in fact, it is as if they are standing by the gates of hellfire telling the people, come. We will throw you into the hellfire. It is as if that is, that is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu mentioned. Or this is what he's saying. Why? Because, that, because of that which is with them. Of affairs that oppose the religion of Allah. That they call the people to opposition of the deen. And anything that opposes that which Muhammad Sallallahu came to. Takes you where? Takes you towards the gates of the hellfire. So they will beautify their speech, and they will beautify that which they are calling to. It will resemble Islam. It will resemble the Sunnah. It will resemble that which the Prophets and the Messengers came with, because that is the whole point of their call. That when they call you, you can't decipher between truth and falsehood. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said to Hudayfa that there will, that, that, that will be a people, and they will follow other than my Sunnah, and they will be guided by other than my guidance. You will recognize some of it. And you will repudiate other parts of it. That you, Hudayfa, and the likes of you, those who have tamiz, those who have the ability to discern between truth and falsehood because they studied the deen. They knew truth from falsehood. So they are able to discern. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Hudayfa, you'll be able to recognize. You'll recognize the good from the evil from them. And you will notice that. And there will be callers. Then he mentioned after that, after that good, there will be callers upon the gates of Jahannam. So whomsoever answers them and obeys them, then they will cast that person into the hellfire. So their call is to invite the people to answer what they are calling to. And because the people are deceived by their fine speech, because the people are deceived by the way that they beautify that which they are presenting, a lot of the Muslims are deceived by them. They are deceived by the callers. Who say, listen, Akhi, we are going, we are only studying the religion. We only want khair, we only want good, we only want to make dhikr. 
How many times do you hear that from them? We only want ibadah. We only love the Messenger of Allah. We only want khair in the ummah. We only want unity. How many times do you hear these calls? Those are calls that reach into the very depths of our hearts because we recognize the goodness of that which, which is being said, meaning the words. We want good. Who doesn't want good? We want unity. Who doesn't want unity? We want the oppression removed from the Muslims. Who doesn't want that? We want dhikr. Who doesn't want dhikr? We want ibadah. We want to worship Allah. We want to express our love for the Messenger of Allah. Who doesn't want that? So those calls, they reach into the hearts of the Muslims. But behind that apparent call is a group of people that when they invite you in by that call, then they beautify their speech and they make bid'ah seem alluring. They make misguidance seem like guidance. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, they will not follow my sunnah. They will not follow my sunnah and they will not be guided by my guidance. So this will be the cause of the people being cast into the hellfire. Because that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. That whomsoever answers their call, they will hurl them into the hellfire. So Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he asked the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to describe them to us. Why? So that people like Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and the great scholars after him and the tabi'een and the atba up until our time that we can recognize how to discern who they are. How do we distinguish between the people of truth and the people of falsehood? So the Prophet Wasallam, he said to him, هُم مِنْ جِلْدَتِنَا That they are from our jild, meaning that they are from our ummah, from our people. وَيَتَكَلَّمُونَ بِأَلْسِنَتِنَا and, and that they will speak with our language. So they will speak with our lugha and they will resemble the ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. Rather, they may even infiltrate the ummah. They are infiltrated within the ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. But they will be known by their call. But who will recognize their call? Except for the likes of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and whomsoever inherits that knowledge of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So those who inherit that knowledge, they'll be able to distinguish. They are known by their da'wah because their da'wah opposes the deen of Allah. How do we know it opposes the deen of Allah? Because we study the deen of Allah. We study the sunnah. We study the way of the sahaba. We study the books of old. We study those ancient works. The books of the great imams of the salaf. And because they give us the ability to discern and to distinguish between truth and falsehood. So, we are expecting a group of people to come to us from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who will call us to misguidance. We are expecting that. We are expecting them to speak our language. Rather, they may even speak our language more eloquently than we do. They may be rooted in the ummah of Muhammad more rooted than we are because many of us may be converts to Islam or reverts to Islam. But they may even come from Muslim families for over generations and generation after generation that their families due to their tasawwuf or due to their quburiyah and their grave worship, or due to their tashayyu, and the ideas of the rafida and the shia, and the khawarij, for generation after generation, even though they are rooted in Islam, in Muslim families, that they may be the ones that have come to us with these false misguided ideas. And at other times, it may be someone who was infiltrated from outside, as Abdullah ibn Saba'a did in the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So Hudayfa, he asked the Messenger of Allah, Regarding the makhraj from this fitna, how do I exit from this tribulation if I reach that? Or if that tribulation, that fitna reaches me? So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, gave him a solution, gave him the cure. He said, stick to the jama'ah of the Muslims and their imam. Meaning that if you have a ruler over you, whether he is tyrannical or whether he is pious, whether he is good to you or whether he is bad to you, whether he feeds you or whether he leaves you to starve. That do not oppose him, be alongside with him, and all of you Muslims be united under him. Because there in that there is safety. And there is a statement from the Salaf of this Ummah, and they ascribe it to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. That he said to the people that that which you hate in unity in the jama'ah is more beloved to Allah than that which you love in your 
differing and your disunity. So sticking with the ruler and being a united body under him is more beloved to Allah than that which you love in the disunity and the splitting that occurs. So then Hudayfa he said to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So what if there is no Jama'ah and they have no Imam? So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said then abandon all of those sects. Abandon all of them. Meaning do not be with them and do not live with them. Do not accept their methodologies and do not act as they act and do not do as they do. So when those Jama'at and those sects they go out marching in the streets don't join them. And think to yourself, well, I'm the only one in my house and everyone else is going, I'm going with them. Let them go. Stay in your house alone. When they indulge in bid'ah and hundreds of thousands of people in a town or a city celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu and they say, come out, you stay. Don't join any of those sects in their deviation. That you die alone upon the sunnah is more beloved than that you die upon one of those sects of misguidance. So much so that the Prophet Sallallahu said, even if you have to bite on to the roots of a tree and death reaches you whilst you are in that state, meaning that you should hold on to the roots of the tree. And this is not to be taken upon its literal meaning. The meaning here is that you hold on to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the sunnah of his sahaba. That you hold on to the manhaj of the Salaf al-Salih. That which the the, our, the, the first of the people were upon in this religion and that is for you self, in that there is salvation for you from differing and splitting from the truth and that's why we mentioned the hadith previously that you are فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي that binding upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided caliphs and this is the methodology of the saved sect that which the Prophet ﷺ said that which I and my companions are upon today. And the statement of the Prophet ﷺ in his solution to stay out, to, to, to be removed from the times of fitan and to be removed from tribulations when he said, that you are to return back to the first affair. And we're going to mention those hadith and where they are and, and their sources later on, inshallah. So Imam An-Nawwi rahimahullah he mentioned in, in his Sharh of Sahih Muslim in volume 6 400 and page 440 he said from the, in this hadith of Hudayfa he commands with sticking to the jama'ah of the Muslims and their ruler and, 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 uh, and he obligated obedience to that ruler even if that ruler is committing sins even if he is disobedient to Allah even if he takes the wealth of the people and other than that, Allah's Messenger وسلم, he commanded that you are to be obedient to him in that which does not involve you obeying him, whereby you would fall into sin. And Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in Fatul Bari, volume 13, page 46, he said, narrating from Ibn Jarir al Tabari in his explanation of this hadith, he said, In this hadith, in this hadith is a mention of what is to be done when there is no imam over the Muslims and the people have divided into groups and parties into ahzab then one is not to follow anyone in his sectarianism in his firq in his, in, in his firqa in his sect he should stay away from all of them if he is able to do so out of fear that he may fall into evil Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah in a Silsilat al-Sahihah, volume 6, he said that this hadith has a great station in the landmarks of his prophethood or in the signposts of his prophethood. And in his advising the ummah and what the ummah is in need of from being free from sectarianism and hisbiya and partisanship, which has disunited them and has shattered their unity such that their power has departed and their strength has departed. And it is from the reasons why the enemies have gained mastery and overpowered the Muslims. And this is corroborated and confirmed by the statement of Allah, where Allah said, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيْحُكُمْ Surah Al-Anfal, where Allah said, 
and do not dispute with one another lest you should lose your courage and your strengths and your strength it departs away from you. And this is a very clear and apparent matter that is related to the, to the affair of the Muslims today where as Sheikh Al-Mani said there is no established united body of the, of the Muslims and an imam to whom allegiance is given Rather, they are differing and opposing sects and parties, differing in thoughts and differing in manhaj also. However, what is correct, my brothers and sisters, that they are imams. They are rulers. And those rulers are to be obeyed. Those rulers are to be obeyed. And those, and, and, and as Shaykh islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, that even if the lands are split and each of the lands has a ruler, then the ruler is obeyed in that regard. So that the strength of the Muslims, even if it is divided, that in a particular land, the Muslims are united, so, it, so the situation doesn't become worse. And finally, he mentions, so in this hadith is the fact that if a Muslim reaches the likes of this condition, then he must not become, you know, a partisan. He must not become, you know, like a person who joins any of those, any of those ahzab. He must not join any of those parties. He must not join any of those jama'as or those jama'at, or those groups, or be alongside any of those sects so long as there is not to be found a jama'ah. That just because you don't find a group of people doesn't mean that you join Ahlul Bid'ah and the people of misguidance. You don't do that, my brothers and sisters. Rather, you stick to the truth and you stick to the people of truth. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.